My name is Sarah M. Gillespie, although most of you do address me as Melissa. Enticed by the mining industry and sensing the opportunity that presented itself in the Roaring Fork Valley, my husband, Colonel Henry B. Gillespie, purchased options in the Spar and Galena mines on Aspen Mountain in the fall of 1879 from Mr. Philip Pratt. I remember arriving in this valley in the fall of 1880 after an arduous travel across Taylor Pass. Many obstacles presented themselves along the way. I recall the struggles we encountered with the steep cliffs through Castle Creek Canyon. The men would have to lower the wagons with ropes and pulleys. Now I made sure they were careful with my dearest possession, after the boys, of course, my little pump organ which proved to be great solace during the long evenings of that first winter. The young folks would gather in our home, the big tent near Ute Springs. I still bear in memory the sweet sounds of their voices mingled with the tones of that organ. I was one of 13 women who wintered here that very snowy first year. As is typical of our modern Victorian society, it falls to the women of the town to maintain the character of the community. Now, if we left it to the imagination of the miners and the single fellows, we may have ended up with another rough and sinister place like Leadville, but we were determined to avoid that in Aspen at all costs. The amusements of that first year were limited. We established the Literary Society in December, thankfully so, as it proved to be the only real source of pleasure in the camp that winter. And there we would listen to songs or to essays and dialogues, which stirred up fond remembrances and carried thoughts back to one's faraway home. We even printed a literary periodical. <laughs> we also started a glee club, which favored my husband's strong bass voice. As spring approached, the attendance waned in favor of more outdoor activities like picnics and sporting events. So our charitable organizations were largely a social affair. We performed many musicals and dances over the years. We performed at the Rink Opera House long before Mr. Wheeler gave us the Grand Wheeler Opera House. I fondly recall our production of The California Uncle in 1882. Perhaps you'll remember this snippet of verse. Cover them over with beautiful flowers. Deck them with garlands, those brothers of ours, lying so silent by night and by day, sleeping the years of their manhood away, the years they had marked with the joys of the brave the years they must waste in the sloth of the grave. All the bright laurels they fought to make bloom fell to the earth as they went to the tomb. But I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> now, our first home was the big tent that I made mention of earlier. However, in 1885, we purchased four lots and built a mansion of extravagant proportions on the corner of Hallam and Aspen Streets. Our home's grandest addition was the billiards room, completed in 1886. The wealth that was pouring into families all over our city allowed us to furnish our homes in a manner to which few were accustomed. My family, along with the Webbers, ordered upright pianos for our homes. We had them delivered by train from Denver to Leadville. There they were disassembled, loaded on a pack train for passage over the mountains, and then reassembled. Well, I should not mention the cost, but it was extravagant, to say the least. I pray for our return to these days of splendor and celebrate the glory this land of ours provides. God bless us all.